And she was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. So Becoming the first Indian American woman to be nominated as a vice presidential candidate in America. I stand before you as the first candidate for vice president of the United States of South Asian descent. What is up, guys? Tyson De La Cruz here. Thank you so much for rocking with me. Candace Owens has been on an investigation spree. She has been searching and digging the intro webs to discover the truth about Kamala Harris's heritage. She's claiming to be black. Is she black? Is she white? Does it matter? No, it doesn't necessarily matter. But to the media, the media is bringing it up like it matters because we don't want to run this race politic bullcrap. At the end of the day, it's about who is the best candidate to be in the position of CEO, President of the United States. We're going to jump into the latest video of Candace Owens' investigation spree on the intro web. Shout out to everybody watching. Drop your comments down below. Smash a like button. And uh, let's get into the video. Just as a sheer investigation, if something is wrong, I reserve the right to correct it. I honestly wish that we would just have Donald J. Harris, Donald Jasper Harris, sit down and answer some questions right. or Kamala Harris to straighten it out for us. How could you just be purporting to be black and running around with Megan the Stallion shaking her booty so you can raise money, bringing out Lil John, walking out to Beyonce, knowing that you are telling some very big lies. So here's the thing, what everyone agrees upon is that Donald J. Harris is the big question mark in this family. Something is not making sense and that something is his written piece regarding his Jamaican heritage, his Jamaican ancestry. And I'm just gonna quickly remind you of what instantly flagged me as odd about that piece. Well, first and foremost, as we have said many times, he mentions both his mother and his father only once in one sentence in that piece. That is it, just one sentence dedicated to his mother and his father. Extremely strange if you are doing a piece about your heritage. He also rather mysteriously claims that he doesn't know the ancestry at all of his grandmother, Miss Iris. Miss Iris, he writes, Nay Finnegan. She wouldn't have been Nay Finnegan. She would have been Nay Allen. Um, uh, so that's strange to me as well. Uh, who he writes the entire article about. The entire article is about his grandmother, Miss Iris. So the fact that he is simultaneously claiming not to know her ancestry, we just got to run that through the bank of common sense, right? I was super close with both of my grandparents. It would be utterly bizarre for me to claim that I just didn't know their ancestry. Like that is just something that comes up if you are very close to your grandparents as he purports to be. He says, Miss Iris raised him and she was, you know, uh, and Christiana Brown, Miss Chrissy raised him and they were fortified and they were strong and he learned all of these lessons from them. And yes, on Miss Iris, she just very quickly mentions that he, her ancestry is unknown to him. He also in the piece very obviously declines to mention all of his many siblings and half siblings only mentions one sibling. Her name is Enid Harris. And we know that he has at least five. And regarding Enid Harris, we have not yet been able to find anything about her. Now, it is plausible that she got married and now has a different last name. And that's why we can only chase so many rabbits down the hole. But we have not been able to just verify who Enid Harris actually is from his piece. So we've got a sibling who he mentions that we can't find at all. And then about five siblings that we can find who he doesn't have anything to say about. So that's interesting. So here is what happened earlier today and why we are so late today on the podcast. We received an email from someone that was purporting to be a very close family friend of somebody in Kamala's family. Now, of course, we instantly fleshed this out, uh, researched the person on Facebook, and it looked pretty legit right off the bat that this person could plausibly uh, be a close family friend to the Harris family. And I'm, I'm going to be scant on the details here because we've not yet been able uh, to get on the phone, hoping that will happen later tonight with the actual Harris relative. But the conversation that we had with the friend of was incredibly interesting. He basically said that this particular H Harris family member would like to talk, that they have been watching the series, paying attention to it, and they 
may have some things that they would like to clarify and some things that they would like to say. And I instantly said, of course, that's exactly what we have been waiting for. We're not doing this. Well, it, it's getting fun, obviously, but we're doing this because we are just realizing some major holes and this woman is trying to be the president of the United States. It's relevant. Everybody should be talking about this. We cannot have somebody uh, become the president of the United States who is telling us some major lies about their background. So this family friend similarly grew up in Jamaica and expressed the following to me. First and foremost, that the family is fielding calls, as I mentioned at the top of the show, from various media outlets, namely the Washington Post, calling around trying to gather information. I guess they're trying to fact check the story, maybe themselves realizing some holes, and they have not, by the way, I should mention, reached out to me at all, which is quite interesting. They're probably just trying to debunk it quietly because there's a lot of people that are following the story and realizing that something is quite wrong. We don't know what that something is, but we all agree that something is wrong. This individual family friend also confirmed to me that Donald Harris lived for a time in the household of our white Iris and his father, Oscar Harris, which would make sense because white Iris and father Oscar Harris were married uh, until his dying day. Um, by the way, Chris, we can pull up that chart right now if people just wanna follow that along. We can pull up the family chart. Um, now, I want to be clear, this oh, family chart no. is what we're this putting together good. of people that were married. Obviously, you can see Kamala Harris. We have the people that she uh, says are her parents. I have question marks about that. We'll get to the bottom of it. And then we have Donald Harris. Now, I want to be clear, Donald Harris alleges that his mother is Beryl. Um, so that is, we're just putting there up visually because we are speaking about Iris. In fact, we'll make a little edit and connect Donald Harris to Oscar. Beryl seems to be this, this, this question mark. Uh, but yes, uh, we are, we have now a, a confirmation from somebody who is saying that Donald Harris, uh, lived in the household for a time period with his father and who would be, um, Iris and Iris that he, grew up with at some point, which would in my mind be his entire childhood because of when they got married. And so that fact, again, makes it exceedingly strange that he completely omitted that iris from his Jamaican heritage article. Why, why are you skipping all of these relatives? It just doesn't make sense. I asked this family friend if he ever met or heard of Beryl outside of the pieces of Kamala speaking about her paternal grandmother, Beryl, um, while he was in Jamaica. And he said, no, he never heard of her. So that's interesting. It could mean something. It could mean nothing. I'm just telling you what this family friend said. Uh, he also says that Oscar, our Oscar Harris, had three children before he married Vioris. Three children, he's alleging, before he married Vioris. And this is why I really want to have this conversation with the family member because I want to put these names together. Uh, he also noted that, and this is very true in the Caribbean, uh, particularly in Jamaica, that people sleep around a lot on the island. I know that. It's, it is true. And that is of some interest that, uh, you know, Vioris would marry somebody who had three children before they got married. That, to me, is is interesting. I, again, am just working to confirm who exactly those individuals are, but it does make it even stranger that Donald Harris has mentioned no other siblings in his piece aside wow. from Enid Harris, his sister. Is it a half-sister? Is it a full sister? We don't know. Uh, we are looking for more details there. My understanding at this moment after the conversation that I had is that far from the representation of the media who looked for family members to say, everyone's so proud of Kamala, it seems to me that there are some family members that are not um, who perceive her to be problematic, to perceive parts of her story to be problematic. And if we are able to secure this interview with this individual, I don't know if he's going to speak publicly. I don't know if he just wants to speak privately to clarify some things. Then it is going to be a major expose um, because Ooh. my sense is that there is a lot of fraud that is being imparted at this moment. And the media is complicit in covering it up. As By the usual. Way, mentioned here. That somebody uh, who emailed me, that we've received so many emails, had this theory that it's quite interesting, obviously not saying it's true, but their theory is that it's plausible that Donald and Vioris could be the parents of Kamala. That works according to the timeline. It certainly works according to the timeline. 
I got to pause this really quick know. because this right here, Candace had, had mentioned this and we'll get back to the video, but Candace had mentioned like, look at these similarities. This is uh, supposedly Kamala Harris's uh, real grandmother and the grandmother that she Kam Kamala Harris places in her book was actually the help, the help of her family. And you can see on this photo that they look very similar. So if that's true, and our job here is to simply ask questions and to try to find the answers and to clarify things that were wrong. But I did see a few of your emails coming in that were all of you going, this is what it looks like. This is what it could be, whatever. Um, and then that would potentially, as the email said, that would potentially explain why he doesn't want to mention this person at all. Who knows that, by the way, that's in full tinfoil hat land. There is no evidence of that. But I just wanted to give that an honorable mention. All right, guys, now there's this case of another email that was received. And at first I was like, okay, you know, the heading, the headline in the email was uh, Kamala Harris is, is German Jewish. And the first thing that came to my mind, again, like as we've been doing this investigation, why hide any of this stuff? Like, who cares if your lineage dates back to Jewish people, dates back to Irish people? Like, what is the shame here? And that is putting together a picture that we are missing something because nobody cares. Like, we live in such a multicultural society that we almost anticipate when you go back far enough in anybody's ancestry that there's just going to be a lot of different races and mixes. And so it's just odd that they're leaving out some things. So I want to take you through what this person emailed. And the first thing that they said was that they had recognized that on the genealogy websites, there was an intentional red herring, uh, a made up individual to throw people off the scent of trying to figure out who Joseph Alexander's father was. So let's pull up that chart again so you guys can follow along um, and know exactly what it is that we're talking about, that family chart. So um, again, we know that Oscar, uh, that Donald Harris, when he wrote his piece, kind of says that beyond the Miss Chrissy generation, that's his Miss Iris, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that's his uh, Miss Irish generation, that he doesn't know he doesn't know anything about his family ancestry. So it sort of stops at Joseph Alexander Harris, which is kind of weird. Well, this guy is saying, no, I have figured this out, actually. Um, we do know who the father was of Joseph Alexander Harris. He had the same name, uh, the first, uh, first name and last name, but his middle name was different. It was Bravo Harris. He says that Joseph Bravo Harris is the relative that they are purporting that they don't know, but they do in fact know that this is the great grandfather of Donald Harris. And the reason that they're blocking this, he says, is because he belonged to a different church than his relatives, that he was Jewish, and that there was actually a public record of this um, on his gravesite, uh, which is on, there's like a, a website that directs you to Jewish tombs in Jamaica. We have fact-checked this, and this is true. And he says that actually more can be learned about him in a book that was published in 1941 from a man named Jacob A.P.M. Andrade. So the forward, you can see this book is, is very old. Again, it was published in 1941 in Kingston, Jamaica. And the forward of the book tells you uh, that really this was just a labor of love, uh, that Mr. Andrade, the person who put this together, has painstakingly collected information and carried out research over a period of 17 years. He has interviewed scores of people written hundreds of letters, and has searched 163 will books and 1,400 deed books at the Island Record Office in Spanish Town. So we know that that is where their family is from, and so that is immediately of interest. We know that this person is going through all of the records. Now, if you go in this book to Appendix L, listed under the, quote, cemetery, cemetery of former English and German congregation, you see, in loving memory of Joseph Bravo Harris, okay, born November 2nd, 1855, died on the 20th of September, 1894. Then there is another section which lists Joseph Harris under um, St. Anne, the person who emailed me is saying that this is an uncle, uh, under St. Anne, which again, we know that all of the relatives are from the St. Anne parish. And it says also on his pen property, you see that in the corner, St. Anne on his pen property 
Inverness. Now, where have we seen the word before? That's a tell if that is indeed his property. It's an important clue because Donald mentions Inverness as the place where Miss Iris, the grandmother he was so close to but didn't know any details about, he says that she was from there, but like her ancestry is unknown to him. So it it does place, you know, the family at that time here, which is a, a major clue. Joseph Bravo, by the way, had a brother, uh, and his name was Michael Ralph Bravo, and he is registered as a Freemason in Jamaica. This guy shows me this, and here it is. You can actually see the logs of the the Freemason, uh, the Freemasons signing their names there. He is registered in 1908, and that particular lodge that he is registered in, it makes him an England, an English Freemason. And that is considered the oldest Masonic lodge in the world. It was established as an underground movement to support the Whigs. Now, a lot of you guys asked me questions in the comment section. You're like, can I speak more about Freemasonry? And that is just, uh, that would be an entire series. It's relevant. You should learn about Freemasonry. It is definitely, like I said on past episodes, it was an underground movement of people that were trying to overthrow empires, trying to overthrow kings, and they were meeting in secret society, like meeting in these free Freemasonry lodges to discuss how to do that. So I wanted to just give you a brief history because I was looking into that. Okay, so if he's alleging that this is the family, we're seeing the Freemasonry thing come up again. Um, and what is it that were the aims of that particular Masonic Lodge. And it is true that um, Freemasonry has a lot to do with the establishment of America. Like England was not cool just losing America after the Revolutionary War. We were then um, infiltrated by a bunch of Freemason lodges and it became a way to sort of fight for America within America, but do it in a way that was secret. Anyways, that particular lodge that uh, he is registered in, this is again, Michael Ralph Bravo, who would be the brother of Joseph Bravo, is the oldest Masonic lodge in the world. As I said, it was an underground movement to support the Whigs. There's a historian who notes that the Whig administration of England organized this grand lodge as a loyalist counter to the Jacobite rising of 1715. This get, We're not going to get too deep into history here, but it dates back to the War of Three Kingdoms between England, Scotland, and Ireland. So again, Freemason lodges kind of rising because they wanted a certain political philosophy to win. This particular lodge was down with Whiggism which essentially sought to prevent a Catholic ascension to the English throne, especially that of any of um, King James II's descendants. So they were particularly interested in break, making sure that the Catholic Church gained no more power. So that's just a little back history in case you're interested in what that lodge's aims were when it was established. So we are seeing that family member. And then of interest is that that Michael, then settled in Canada. We find him, that Freemason, on a ship manifest. So what's interesting here is we're starting to see the coordinates. We're starting to see a map here of the same places, data, starting all the way here uh, back in the 1800s in Kamala's alleged family to now, presently, right? We were starting to look at logs, and we know that they spent, this. the Harris family spent time in Canada. Uh, we know that they spent time in New Orleans. We know that they spent a lot of time in Jamaica. And so this person did indeed, Michael, settle in Canada, which would put the Harris family in Canada. We also so no, by the way, we haven't yet gotten to her mother, but that she also worked in Canada, was in Canada a lot. So there may be reasons for that, but it is of interest that Canada keeps popping up in our research. Okay, so like I said, that kind of is the person that he found that he believes that they actually do know this ancestry, but for some reason are trying to obfuscate it. What reason that would be, again, is just, it's just not clear to me. Um, then he gets into, by the way, we should show that page um, where he speaks about the conversions that were happening um, in the in the book. Yeah, yeah. So as this guy is kind of going through all of this and speaking about how, it, again, this, this book, A Record of the Jews in Jamaica is the title of it. As he's speaking through all of this, he speaks about why it was that so many Hebrew residents in the St. Anne Parish uh, began converting or marrying. And what is of interest regarding Joseph Bravo Harris is the fact that, look at this, the Hebrews resident from the same book in St. Anne Parish assembled for divine worship on Yom Kippur at the home of Joseph Harris at Brownstown. 
I was credibly informed that the room Harris appropriated for the service, which was during his lifetime, never was never used for any other purpose. Harris was an English Jew. He came here from New Orleans, Louisiana. Again, another coordinate that just keeps popping up. And then the author writes, I have not been able to ascertain the provision for worship that was made in any of the other parishes. St. Elizabeth must, however, have had organized worship during the 18th century. It is very pleasing to record that at no time since the reform movement assumed practical form during the 19th century has religious persecution in the island reached so acute a stage as to at all render it possible for the setting up a reform congregation, as was the case in some of the neighboring islands, thus to save many on this account from leaving their ancestral religion. So he's just kind of going through all of this, speaking about how some people uh, left the faith, and he says that he's inclined to believe that they did that uh, because they just didn't like the rabbinical Judaism with its unyielding laws and just kind of wanted to marry into other families and become Christian. But that is of interest here. So again, if we can get up that family chart, we're speaking now about Joseph Bravo Harris, and he believes that this this is the father of Joseph Alexander Harris. So right in the chart you're seeing, we don't have a picture for him, but we have a blank spot for him if this is correctly, if, if this is correct. Then above that, we have um, someone that would be technically Kamala's third great-grandfather, Ralph Harris, who married Julia Bravo. That's where that middle name Bravo comes from. And what he's been able to discern is that they were also uh, born in 1832 in England. He married Julia Bravo. They had two children together. He then married Sarah Ann Winchester, and they had two children together. He also had one son with Louisa Mary Evans, and that's where he says he's gotten as far back, but for whatever reason, he is saying that this would, of course, be known to the Harris family because Harris was a big name in St. Anne Parish. She would obviously know that her heritage dated back to this. She would obviously know that she had Jewish relatives, which, again, just keeps leading us to this question of why hide any of this? This is not something that the world would be upset about or angry about. So I, I just don't understand why we are hiding certain relatives, pretending not to know certain ancestral things. What is the explicit aim of that? And I, I can't come up with a logical answer. There's nothing that makes sense to me. I'm, I'm going way down in my head. I'm like, let me just like go in straight conspiracy land. Why would you want to hide a relative? It can't be so simple that it's because you just want people to think that you're black. I mean, can it be? Can it really be that simple that you just want people to think that you're black because the Democrats are, are so reliant as they are upon the black vote? Like maybe, like maybe, but that just seems really foolish because eventually someone was going to look into this and see all of these holes. Maybe they were thinking it just wasn't going to happen before the election. And that is that is a reality with the entire media on your side, not poking holes in your story, instead condemning people that question your blackness, you probably could get away with it at least until um, election time. Because think about it, this woman was just established, Kamala Harris, in a, an effective coup against Joe Biden. They were like, yeah, never mind. She, she's the uh, Democrat nominee. That's it. She's a Democratic nominee. No questions asked. Nobody actually uh, wanted her to be, but here she is. The media then fawned over her. That means that, that took place in August. We only have until November. All they had to do was have nobody look into this for three months. Maybe it is. Maybe it is that simple. It was just an election time thing, and it really is just about the black vote, perhaps. But again, this was super interesting. We're going to put this document that he put together also on our locals page so people can look into it and see whether or not they believe that, <clears throat> that there is some merit to those claims. I, I do think that he did a very good job uh, putting that together. Now, I know I've been promising you all week that we were going to cut to Kamala's family, but the Donald Harris thing just keeps becoming so interesting. And every time I get one of these emails and just trying to now establish a contact, I keep prioritizing that. But I obviously am seeing all of your emails regarding her mother. And I did want to just show you this one comment because I think it's really interesting. We actually have received so many comments that are developing the same theme, that the marriage between Kam Kamala's parents is just strange. And this is one comment that came in yesterday yesterday on YouTube that pretty much sums up all of the comments and emails that we have been getting pertaining to this. This woman writes Indian here from India with some Indian context. B BTW, love your work, Candice. Kamala's mother belonged to a very high class bureaucratic family. So marrying someone outside your, relig your religion, caste, race in that era was extremely unlikely, especially for someone like Kamala's mother. Not to mention marrying a black person would be absolutely impossible because racism has been prevalent in India as well. 
So I completely believe Kamala's dad not being black, rather being Irish, Indian, Hindu, since he looks like a lot of old Indian men that I see in real life here, especially the South Indians. The Communist Party also seems so interesting because in the 20th century, especially post-independence, communism was extremely popular in India, owing to the closeness to Soviet Union. And even today, some of the most influential and powerful political parties in India, especially South India, the region that Kamala's mom belongs to, are hardcore communist parties with hardcore communist ideologies even today. The head of the state of Kamala's mom is from has literally changed his family name to Stalin, LOL. Total personal opinion, but I absolutely believe Kamala's dad not being black at all, but Irish Hindu with maybe some Indian ancestry, because that's way more believable, especially when you know the family background and social class and status of Kamala's mom and the Indian society and mentality during the 20th century. P.S. is a non-American, I find it insane that this isn't mainstream news in your country. I follow global news, especially American news, very closely, and to find no one talking about this is almost a culture shock, because had it been any other country, this would have been a huge media piece running across all news channels 24-7. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It would have been everywhere in America had it been Donald Trump. <laughs> but as we know, the media is a part of the establishment, the deep state wants Kamala Harris to win. They're doing everything to assist that win. And the question is why? And I think it's really important, therefore, to establish what her genealogy is. And that's why I am following every angle of this. But it is interesting to see so many people of Indian descent say that exact same thing, that they would not have just allowed her to marry a black man. And so... I think that Judge Joe Brown yesterday when he remarks that Donald Harris is of Hindu and Irish descent, majority white, well, that seems to be the thing that makes the most sense here. And again, still does not explain why it is that they are purporting that she is black and still does not explain why we do not have more people speaking about it because if nothing else, you should be outraged, positively outraged at the fact that she is pretending to be black. Like that is like... That is one of the wildest things that I've ever seen. It is it is so inappropriate, but it also, by the way, beyond it being inappropriate, it demonstrates that she's a sociopath. It's, yes. it's really interesting because people got really upset when J.D. Harris had said that women who don't have any children should not be in positions of power to make decisions in the country. And the media intentionally... You know, took that out of context. The next thing you know, we have Tara, Taylor Swift holding her cat and like, I'm with Kamala because I'm like a cat lady. But what he's actually trying to say is that when you have a family, he's not mocking people that are struggling with fertility or saying like, oh, if you can't literally cannot have a child, but you desperately want one, he's not throwing you in the same bucket. He's referring more to people who, women who choose not to have children, who instead focus their entire life on their careers. It does tell you something about that person. It, it just does. That is just the reality of things. People who are just like, I never want kids and all I care about is my career. What does that signal to you about a woman? Like she's overridden her own biology um, and will do anything for power, right? She'll do anything for power. And you do not want to elect sociopaths into power. It seems to be the only thing that we do right? Because they feel nothing when they're inflicting pain upon you. They feel nothing when they're lying to you. This is why even the genealogy uh, pertaining to Brigitte Macron is so important because over and over again, we are seeing that people who don't care at all about your family, don't care at all about your family life, have these tendencies to want to be put into places of power to determine family policy. And so this is why among many other reasons, getting to the bottom of Kamala's true genealogy is a priority. And we're getting close. We are getting incredibly close. If I am able to later tonight establish this connection with her family member, I just can't imagine that this doesn't just blow everything up, like instantly just explode this entire narrative. Because as I said, my instinct is that they too are kind of not down with the things that Kamala is saying and the things that Kamala is doing. And they have some question marks about what it is that she's doing. And they got a lot of family members, tons of them that aren't even being mentioned. Maybe they're not being mentioned because they know that these people don't agree with them and don't agree with their um, political manipulation at this stage. Oh boy, the plot is thickening. Can't, shout out to Candace Owens for doing this investigating reporting. 
Uh, this was my first time watching this and it it is it is getting deeper and deeper and the deeper that we dig the more that she's uncovering and i'm looking forward to the follow up to this 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 should be mainstream because think about it somebody who is claiming that they're black but they're not black what what are you doing like why just to get black votes it's stupid you should be proud of your heritage regardless on what it is. You should be proud of where you came from and a representative of where you came from. That, to me, shows true character. This is showing Kamala's true character. It's This is bananas to me. Let me know what you guys think about this. Drop it in the comment section down below. Smash the like button. Share, subscribe, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.